If you were here yesterday, the Sabbath day, you would realize the blessing that has already come your way. But you've only had a portion of that blessing. And as we continue through the rest of today, information will transform you. It will touch your heart. It will touch your family. And it will make you make decisions that you probably wouldn't have thought you would have made this day. God is a wise God, an all-knowing God. And he wants to do everything in his power um, to save his children. And you know what? We are all God's children. No matter who we think we are, no matter how we behave, no matter the experiences we have gone through, God is our Heavenly Father and he wants to save us. So before we start our program this morning, let us bow our heads and ask the Lord to be with us because we need the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts and minds so that we can make the best and right decisions for our future. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name. Indeed, you are God and there is none like you. And we put ourselves as individuals who are frail, weak, and sometimes insignificant to others. We put ourselves into the hands of the almighty God, knowing that we are protected. We are guided by your word, the Bible, and we are touched by the ministry that we have um, spent time in. We know that we are not the people that we should be, but spending time with you, the goodness of God rubs off on us. Hear our prayer, Lord. Touch us as you've touched the many people who have gone through the corridors of time, transforming and changing their lives. Be with us now, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 At this, time we'll, at this time, we will have our theme song by Abby Eccles.
Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Abby Eccles, for the theme song. You know, when music um, is played or sung before the ministry, it prepares the heart of the individual so that they will receive the blessing. When the right music is played and sung, I should say, it prepares the heart. So at this time, we will move straight into our first testimony, which is the Smith family. Um, and they will do a special With answer. my whole heart, oh, let me love you in my whole heart. None above you, praise and love you with my whole heart with, with my, my whole heart, heart. Lord, Lord let me hear you with my whole heart, heart. ever near you help me hear you with my whole heart with my heart Lord, let me love you with my whole mind. None above you, praise and love you with my whole mind. With my whole mind. Lord, let me hear you with my whole mind. Ever near you, help me hear you. With my whole mind With my whole life Lord, let me love you with my whole life None above you Praise and love you With my whole life With my whole life Lord, let me Fantastic. You know, when you get your little ones involved in your ministry from an early age, not difficult to extract them later on. Well done. At this time, we'll have um, Kashina and Joseph as they bless us with their testimony. Morning, everybody. Morning. Um, so my name is Kashina and this is Joseph. And we have um, six-year-old triplet girls. And we also have a three-year-old son, um, which you heard singing. Kind of. <laughs> they did, they, they sang, and they were very mind. happy. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, you know. I'm, yeah, you're muted, that's okay. Oh, oh? sorry. You're okay. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, we want to just share a little bit about our journey. So we're gonna start from the very beginning when um, I first got pregnant and it wasn't with the girls actually, I I'd, I'd got pregnant, I'd had a miscarriage and then I was like, God, what? I don't understand. Mm. And then a month later, I was pregnant again, but with triplets um, and it was a shock. 
I don't, I'm, I'm not sure anyone really expects triplets, but we knew that God would have us. We just didn't know how he would have us. And I think that's just life in general. Um, we know that the Bible says that God will never leave us nor forsake us, but sometimes it's difficult to know, or sometimes we want to know the how, and we didn't know the how. Um, and I had a really good job that I really enjoyed at that time. My manager was great throughout the whole pregnancy. And then after the girls were born, you have your nine months maternity leave, right? And I remember, I still have my, my diary. In the diary, it said um, nine months, Kashina goes to work and girls go into nursery. And nine months came and we went to look at nursery fees and we thought, okay, well, this isn't happening, is it? So nursery wasn't an option. I went to my manager um, and I said, oh, I I'm not ready to go back to work here. And he was so lovely. He said, don't worry, take a year sabbatical leave, which was great. Um, so I took a, a year sabbatical leave. And through that year, God did some work on us that we didn't expect. I think Different God was things, yeah. yeah, slightly giggling at us. I think, I think that God has a, a sense of humor too. And when we were like, yes, they're going to nursery and yes, I'm going back to work full time. He was probably giggling thinking, you don't know what I've got in store for you guys yet, but <laughs> you're going to see. Um, and so I read in, I believe I can't remember which one. And it was talking about how children should roam like little lambs up until the age of seven. And I read it and I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense because in England, we don't do that. And I just kind of dismissed it. Um, and then a few months later, I saw a study of um, the children in Sweden, Switzerland, Finland, where they don't go to school till seven. And I was like, <laughs> funnily enough, maybe God, maybe God knew something. Get out of here. Imagine that. Um, so I told Joseph and we started to look into it a little bit more. Um, and we just kept the kids home. We didn't really think too much of it, but we just knew we couldn't afford nursery and they weren't going to get any fees until the age of three. But we kind of, God works in mysterious ways. I love him because in the journey of trying to figure out, do we do this? Do we not go through here? We don't know anyone who homeschools. It just so happened, quote unquote, that um, a friend, Ernie and her and her husband were thinking about homeschooling too and then when we decided we, we found out we spoke we were like we could try to figure this out together and in trying to figure this out together we found another friend who was a little bit further who had also been going through the same journey with her husband and they didn't want to send their children to school um and so there were three of us which is amazing right we went from nobody to Three, families. three families and all of our children, the oldest ones were all around the same age. Um, so we were trying to figure this out. We figured it out really bad at the beginning. We literally tried to do school at home, which was extremely stressful. And obviously wasn't what God meant when he said, let the children roam like little lambs until seven, but it was all a learning journey. And um, God was just merciful to allow us to go on this journey. So, when the girls were almost three, I, when the girls were two, I was pregnant with Michael and I was really, really sick with Michael. It was, it was, it was really hard. And it was really hard, I think, because there were two, two, two year old triplets running around as well. Um, and I had really bad nausea. I just, it was really challenging. And once again, in your challenges, God works because Joseph's work he was working far mm -hmm. so he was gone from six and he didn't get home till like seven which is bedtime um and I, at that time I was still trying to do school at home but it wasn't working I remember it was the alphabet I was trying to teach them and I was getting so stressed out because I would be like a hey, this is a this is a b this is c where's a and they look at me and I'm like what is going on why <laughs> Um, I got rid and I didn't do anything and they literally were left to roam like lambs. <laughs> My brother said to me one day, oh, do you know the kids know their alphabet? Which I thought was a bit disrespectful because I'd been trying to get from A to D and I couldn't and they, I don't know what happened. But it was God, 
steering us away from what we had always known because we were both brought up in the school system, mm -hmm. steering us away from it and, and literally back to his word and saying, no, I know what I'm talking about when I say leave them to roam like little lambs. And under direction. Um, and it allowed us to give them space and in their space and with them with you all the time, you would be surprised how much they learn. And it was just a hard lesson that we had to learn. Um, but that that's pretty much the beginning of our homeschooling journey. Yeah. And I think one of the things as well was um, because when we would teach them their um, memory verses and stuff, they could recite it back to us and they are perfectly fine. But when it comes to A, B, C, D, it was like, like, yeah. Um, so yeah, um, as Kashina mentioned, uh, my job previously, I, I could work anywhere. I, we used to live in um, East London, um, so it was anywhere South East that I could go to from Margate down to Brighton. Um, so yeah, I'd literally be at the house. And my my start, it was, I was doing shift work at the time. Um, so Sheena literally was left by herself because I could start at any time, four o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but throughout all of that, um, especially when I say the, the strength that God gave me to continue, the fact that I could come home and the ability to take the children off Kashina's hands because she's obviously been there all day. Um, and half the time, I honestly tell you, half the time, I do not know how I got home. That like, I, I would be so shattered from work. I would get home. Sometimes Sheena would phone me and be like, oh, why are you still out in the car? And I'm like, I, I I didn't even know I'd parked up. I I didn't know I'd got here. Like so, it's, it's really it's earning God's grace. Like seriously, it's earning God's grace. Two incomes um, down to one income, um, and at the time as well, she was earning more than me. So it was it was a big hit to our financial situation. Um, but we we never we never struggled. We had clothes for the girls for a good few years into the future, and it was just like God God provided for us throughout that time. We we didn't have to sit down and worry about things like that. that. Um, there was one time actually. There was one time I remember. This is how how God really provided for us, even when it was a bit of a struggle. Mm -hmm. There was one time I was walking up to the shops, and um, oh yeah. I only had 10 pounds. Now the girls were still in nappies and 10 pounds, that doesn't get you a lot of nappies. And I still needed to get food. Um, and I was walking and I was like, God, how, how am I going to pay for it all? But I have to go there. So we went anyway. And as I was walking, I saw a little bird pecking in between the, the sapphire. And the text that came to mind was, um, he provides for the sparrows. And as I was walking up, I was like singing in my head. I don't know how this, this 10 pound is gonna stretch, but it's gonna stretch, we're gonna be okay. Um, and just before I got to the shop, um, a man stopped me and asked if I have triplets. So for the girls push day, it was a triple buggy. It was two at the top, two at the bottom, one at the top. It's like huge, it's heavy. We called it the beast. It was just a very heavy push chair. So I used to get stopped a lot. So I was like, yes, trying to be really polite with it because I want to go get the stuff so I can go home and the kids are fussing. And he said, oh, Ken, do you know where the bank is? And I said, I do. It's, it's down there and just to the left. And he was like, can you show me? Of course I can show you. Oh, OK, let's go. <laughs> so I had to walk all the way back down. Um, and he was like, can you hold on a moment? And I said, OK, he took out 40 pounds put it in my hand and just walked off. And I was like, I didn't- Hallelujah. They looked my he literally just put it in my hand and walked off. And I was, li I don't really cry, I'm not a crier, but I was in tears in the middle of the street, like tears rolling down my eyes thinking, but God, like you actually do this, this is crazy. So I'm, I'm always, whenever I see a mum who's worried about, or a family worried about finances, is it going to be a strain sometimes? Yeah, maybe it is. But God doesn't fail and he's always provided. And if God's placed on your heart to homeschool, I always say be obedient, be mm -hmm. obedient. You don't have to work out the fine details. Logically, it made no sense to homeschool at that period of time in our lives because we were almost at a disadvantage starting from behind. But God knows and he will, he will sort 
he sorts sorts out all the details and that's okay you don't need to know i don't need to know amen 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 um amen yeah. praise the lord and one of the the most um memorable moments in my I did fully that, yes, we're going to homeschool and it then just came apparent, okay, so we need to move out to the city so they can roam like lambs. And um, we, I then started looking for jobs uh, outside and we found one up near, I found one up near Peterborough. Um, and so we were meant to move, I was meant to get a job there and then we were meant to move up there. And um, it was literally the Friday beforehand I was meant to start the job on the Monday, the Friday beforehand, I got cold feet, essentially. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure that God wants me to move here because we, um, where I'd be going to work, I'd be losing out on London waiting. And we didn't have a house. Um, yeah. And, and we didn't have anywhere to move to, yeah. So I'd have to do a lot more, more traveling, um, taking me about two and a half hours to get to work um, for the meantime until we moved up there um, on a lot less money. So it was like, okay. Um, and for the Friday, um, for the Monday, sorry, um, someone contacted me about a job that was around the corner that I was earning um, more than what I was getting at my, at my the job that I had at the time. So I was like, oh yeah, maybe this is where I'm meant to be. No, in full world, not where I'm meant to be. But I took it anyway, and and God just turned around and said that this wasn't for you. And within two weeks, I was let go from that job, and I was like, okay, well. After my wife tried to warn me, as she made claim, um, I was like, well, okay, well, let's made that mistake again. Um, and the first opportunity that came out um, was to move up to Milton Keynes. Um, so we did that. I had no job, um, no nothing, didn't even have any interviews. And within a three month period, two yeah. to three month period, um, I ended up getting an interview um, and getting a job to start just after our moving date. Um, any more than both jobs I would have had um, in London or in Peterborough. Yeah. And it was just like, okay, well, being obedient obviously is, has a lot more perks than being disobedient. So, uh, and here we are now. Yeah. So we're currently um, in Milton Keynes, which isn't our, our end place, we know, mm-hmm. but once again, God's merciful and he works with where you are. So mm-hmm. we are city kids, just actually from South London. So it's like real city, um, <laughs> it's real city. And so he had mercy on us. He didn't think, let's just move you straight to the countryside because we really wouldn't have coped. Mm-hmm. Um, and he moved us to Milton Keynes, which is kind of a bit of like the best of both worlds. It's very green. So all of the pictures that you saw um, in the video are from places around Milton Keynes or about 20, 30 minutes away from Milton Keynes. So there's a lot of greenery and there's a lot of trees, but still shops and things around that we can mm-hmm. go to. And we've been here for three years um, and like we're, we're ready, God. We've learned the first time where we made the mistake of when you said go, we didn't go. And we're, we're not doing that again. So wherever you want us to go, we will go. Just you tell us and we'll go. And I don't know where that is. And I don't mind. I don't mind not knowing because what God's shown us is that he has us in his hand and he is in control. The homeschooling journey has been up and down. And I'd be lying if I said it was always great. Um, that I never have thoughts about, are you doing the right thing? I do. I think many people do. And when you're down, the devil truly kicks you down. Um, I've had cashiers telling me, why are you homeschooling? Who are you? You're you're the cashier. What do you mean? And you literally have to be like Jesus said to Peter, like, get thee behind me, Satan. You're just coming out here to try and like mess with my brain. And you're not going to do that. When that happens, God's so merciful. He always, always sends somebody else. Um, when I moved to Milton Keynes, I didn't know anybody, and we found the Home Ed um, Association, SDA Home Ed Association. He always finds somebody. We found another homeschooling mom. So now there's four of us in Milton Keynes who are homeschooling, who are Adventists. Like he, he's, he has our back. He really has our back. And if you are planning to homeschool, if you are homeschooling and you're feeling really down, mm. if you're not sure whether to homeschool, be obedient. 
And if not can get full testimony, just be obedient because God sorts out the details and you don't you don't have to know what they are. But if he hasn't failed us in the past, he's not going to fail us now and he's not going to fail us in the future. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says he's not a man that he should lie. If he said he will never leave you nor forsake you, he will he will never leave you nor forsake you. Even when it's hard. It's hard. Like life is hard. There's hard. Everything is hard for the girls tying their shoelaces is hard, but you don't give up. You yeah, don't man. say, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. And then a baby's learning to walk. They don't say, oh, no, I fell down a few times, so I'm never going to walk. You get back up in God's strength and you keep going and he will keep you going. So I hope you were blessed. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much, Rashima and Joseph. That has been an inspiration. Um, just to hear how Brother Joseph, you've um, managed to arrive at home and not know how you got there, demonstrates that there is a God in heaven. Um, the homeschooling sister, um, Kashina, you know, it will always be challenging, as you've said. But if you run out of money, just go for a walk. <laughs> the money will come. Because God has everything in his hands. Thank you very much for that. Now we're going to move directly on to the Vittoro family. And we heard a little bit, or should we say, a snapshot of their message yesterday. And I, for one, am looking forward to what they will share um, today. Thank you very much. just want to say thank you to sister Kashina and uh, brother uh, Joseph for their testimony there was so much in there that we could relate to and what happened with us and we're just praising the Lord how he led you and how um, he's going to lead you even more to greater things I believe that the Lord is leading all of us to greater things um, the good thing is that um, the Lord has something even greater and we are where we are, but on present truth, upon present truth, he leads us through his Holy Spirit uh, to be part of be part of that final generation. And um, yeah, we just praise the Lord for that what a wonderful testimony because we, we could relate to it so much. We could relate to it. So not that we had any triplets. We've got three children, but not triplets. But uh, yeah, praise the Lord and um, may the Lord continue to bless you in, in, in your family and ministry there. I'd just like to uh, start off by reading uh, a text which has been the theme for, for our family, or for, for Beth and I. Uh, it's from Matthew 18, verse 19, and it says, Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Um, in other words, the Lord is saying, if there's two of you, so husband and wife, mother and father who, 
who on earth agree about something and if you pray for it it will be done for you by our father in heaven so this has been our um uh, theme because we have to agree we always have to agree and when 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 we agree with each other and it's in agreement with the lord's will with his desires uh it says it will be done uh for you by my father in heaven like uh, uh sister kashina was echoing we know that he will answer and um we've seen it time and time again he is truly a wondrous and a miraculous god uh, before we before we begin i'll just say a, a, a word of prayer father in heaven we ask continually lord for your holy spirit and we thank you for this opportunity to uh, give you all the glory this day thank you for this platform continue to surround us with your heavenly angels and fill us and baptize us with your holy ghost we pray this in jesus name amen it's great to see you again this morning if there are any here this morning who were not here yesterday we we are the victoria family our ministry is called mission ministry we came to that title because our mission in life individually and as a family is ministry for christ jesus yesterday we shared a bit with you and what has been going on recently in our ministry so if you miss that we're sorry we can probably view that with the rest of the great testimony on the youtube advent nature um, nation channel so today we will share with you a bit of how we get here by god's grace we'll see how he leads us jesus leads us and how god if we let him can do amazing thing to to anybody who is willing to give him a chance by faith and the good news is as uh we said yesterday you don't need a degree you don't need a qualification to do this all we need for you is our all is our whole heart yes all all he needs from us isn't it mm -hmm. yeah amen so uh yesterday i forgot to mention as well uh, during the lockdown period as part um uh, when the lockdown came in march before that we also had a visiting ministry uh, now it's it, it's more of a phone calling ministry basically we were uh, from 2015 uh, 20 uh year 15 up till march this year we were going to elderly people's homes uh singing for them shopping for them reading the bible or devotionals and praying with them mm -hmm. but obviously uh, this stopped uh, not because we wanted to and um, the lockdown i believe has broken so many lonely hearts so if you're not already and i'm sure many of you are pick up the phone and call someone today uh, you could be that difference in their lives uh, for hope and encouragement mm -hmm. and be that voice of christ every time uh, we visit we visited the elderly our elderly friends we always prayed for the holy spirit uh, before we went there and we, we continue to do that over the phone uh, while we speak and um, during the call we, we we can hear sadness but also uh, people are just glad that you gave them a call so you know people are dying out there mentally physically and spiritually because of loneliness so Give that person a call you might make that difference in their life the lord may use you to be that difference in their lives so before i begin we'll just say a little bit about our uh, marriage we got married in 2010 i wasn't missionary minded back then but i was transitioning uh, out of the world but uh, i was still very much into it um, the love story on how we met each other is, a, is another story that we're, I'm sure we've the same with many of you. Uh, Beth came from Philippines and I was just praying for an angel uh, to, to turn up. I begged, I, I struggled like um, Jacob, I wrestled with the Lord and he sent Beth, it was like out of heaven. Um, and uh, <laughs> the Lord is always, for some reason, He's always been so dramatic in in our lives other than when we discovered christ's righteousness righteousness by faith everything else was quite dramatic 
So Beth and I got married in 2010 and up to 2015, the, well, continually really, uh, we saw the Lord working in our family, present truth upon present truth, all added all the time. Uh, we were inspired to do homeschooling in 2012 uh, by the, the writings of Ellen White and then uh, country living in 2014 we, we started really th knowing that we have to move out into the country uh, this is uh, by listening to messages online reading and studying and uh, one day my brother my younger brother Jeremiah he said oh there's this family camp meeting happening uh, in Wales uh, you know would you like to attend and Beth and I uh, we said, yes, okay, we'll, we'll go, I'm not expecting anything. This was in 2015. And this is the true camp meeting in this country. I say that because for everything that is true, there's always a counterfeit, uh, if you know what I'm saying. And that's as far as I go with that. But it was truly a blessing. It was such a blessing, Caroline and Paul, uh, Tom and Elaine, Hannah and Kelly spoke. The theme was nothing is impossible, if you remember that back 2015. Uh, I think most of us here is there during that time. Mm -hmm. It really blew our mind. Uh, that world that, uh, that there were people like us in this country. Mm -hmm. We made new friends. It was such a blessing. After the, after the program, we're driving home. We were so inspired and we were praying to, to go forward mm -hmm. for six hours drive. Not, e um, not even a single second we didn't talk. Mm -hmm. This was an instant effect from the family camp meeting. Communication found uh, a new home in our family. As we drove, we prayed for a country leaving, but we had no saving, savings, not, uh, not much money. Three days later, after, uh, after we arrived from the camp meeting, the kitchen in the house we are renting collapsed. The ceiling. Sorry. The ceiling. The yeah. ceiling on our kitchen Collapse. collapsed. Mm. So we have no choice but to leave the place and move. We said we are moving and we are going to the countryside. If we are moving, then we can go to the countryside. But another prob problem arise, we were blamed for the for the destruction of the house and it was not our fault. We had people look at it and it was down to bad workmanship. Nevertheless, our landlord, he gave us a very bad reference and wherever we go, we would go to apply to rent the house, we always failed because of the reference. Yes, yeah, so we, um... Thank you to Jack and Joy for setting up uh, this camp, these camp meetings. Truly, the Lord has blessed you. And it really uh, was that push for us to, to, to move forward. Um, but because of what happened at our house, every house we visited to try to move to, um, we were rejected because of our reference. So we were dejected, but we knew Lord, the Lord had a plan. We had literally a dozen visits. And we thought one is going to accept us. But after the, the, the 11th visit, uh, we just thought maybe the Lord has another plan for us. And then uh, one day we got a phone call from an, an estate agent in Suffolk. And they asked us if we'd like to visit this three bedroom bungalow. This was strange because I didn't register with this, uh, with this estate agent. And we were only looking as far as the M25 from London. As I was working in London, we were li living in North London. I was born and bred in uh, the sunny Tottenham. Mm -hmm. So th this was, uh, this was a, a new move for us. Um, but again, it was strange because the place where we um, registered, it, it was nowhere near Suffolk. When we looked on the map, it was about three hours drive. Um, and we saw it, uh, it wasn't too far from the beach. And it, it was, looked like nice countryside area, and it looked. And if you look on the, um, the actual place, when you look at, uh, I forgot that reviews website, it said the most boring place in England, Halesworth, 
And I said, that's the place. <laughs> um, but so we just thought, let's, let's just go for a day out to, to have a visit to the countryside and uh, the beach. And um, we didn't expect anything. We arrived at the house and it was, it, was a, it was so beautiful. It was surrounded with fruit trees, berry bushes, all by itself uh, in the middle of, of fields. It had a country setting. And, it's, and uh, like, this, like Sister Kashina said, the Lord has a sense of humor. I only prayed, I prayed just for a parking space because our previous house had a parking space next to the bus stop which always got vandalized. You know, I always had scratches on my car and things written on the window and yeah. Um, but I just said, Lord, can I have a lit, just one parking space? And this place had like entire drive. You could fit probably 10 plus car, more cars on there. And um, so this was the one we said, wow, we went in the house and it was beautiful. And we said, we'll take it because we, we felt this is the one. And so the next day, the agency called again and we were rejected because of the references. And I, I, I was like, no, this is this is the one. It, it can't be. And I was like, no, no, no. I was, this is the, this is our house. And I realized how irrational I was sounding to the, to the estate agent. And uh, they said, sorry, you know, um, they apologized. So so uh, Beth was so upset. But uh, I was upset by it. We tried to calm her down and uh, uh, we just prayed. And the next day, the landlady called us and she wanted us to come down to visit the house ourselves. So Beth and I were like, okay, let's, let's just go. We'll go. And we went, we, we met with the landlady. She showed us around and um, she said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to discard the reference and I'd love to have you as, our, as my tenants. We were just praising the Lord. We said, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, she said, you, you, you guys had your differences. You paid your rent. And so I want you to be our, our, my tenants. You look like a lovely family. Um, and so we just said, we just said, okay. So we, so we moved in in September 2015. How good is our God? Praise the Lord. He works in mysterious ways. You know, sometimes... Uh, uh, the, the up and down, it, it's for us. It's for us to trust him and to see if we trust him. It's, it's tests and to, so that we can draw nearer to him. And that's, that's how he's worked with us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the most stressful things in life, as they say, is weddings, funerals are moving. And I was also, uh, I was already suffering from psoriasis and it was, already, and I was kind of semi under control but moving house twice in two months, this really triggered my inflammation to get really worse. Uh, psoriasis is an autoimmune disease disorder. And what it is is where uh, the white blood cells keep uh, replicating on the skin. Uh, you, your body thinks it's constantly under attack. You know, when you cut yourself and the white blood cells go to that region where you're cut and, and repair the, the body with psoriasis, it's, um, it's constantly doing that. I literally had it uh, from my ankles to the top of my head, all of my, all over my face, mm -hmm. all of my arms, and it was really bad. It, it really uh, got worse when we moved house. Um, but 2016 came around, and um, I was still suffering, but I was managing with, with doctor's treatments, but it wasn't really managing. It was just thinking that this is just the way forward. This is just the way it's going to be. But I knew there's something better, but I just thought, Lord, if this is what you, you have for, if this is what I need to humble myself, then so be it. And um, we went again to the family camp meeting in 2016. And the theme this time was, was uh, in his steps, uh, which was a wonderful, wonderful uh, a blessing to us again. The beautiful thing about family camp meeting is that it, it never gets boring and it always it's always um, inspiring and this time sister we met sister Jackie uh, from the medical missionary group the founder her and brother Winston and we invited her to come over to do in our caravan while while in the camp meeting 
and speak to us and, and she did a test on both Beth and I on our health on our health so we really um, got to see uh, a medical missionary for the first time uh, working in, in, in a slight way and we, did, we, we really got, got more in, more and more interested in the medical missionary work uh, as well as uh, as well as even in our own studies um, we saw that through the spirit of prophecy seeing that medical missionary work yeah, it was the final work. So we booked training at the Browns family in Scotland. We've heard uh, medical missionary, but don't have much an idea what it really is. We didn't have the mean to go, but the Lord provided. And we got to spend precious 10 days with the Brown family for that 10 days and the result was amazing. You all experienced real healing from his psoriasis and was not so inspired that uh, he called his parents while we're there and told them that we are going to get rid of your high blood pressure and diabetes type two. So when we got back home, still we are, we are not able to understand all the information we had. But what we need to know, the Lord's use, and, and we grow with that. For 10 days, it again, amazing result with Errol's parents. We said, we cannot hide this to ourselves. We must invite more people to come into our house. A close friend came over with a hormonal problem. So we did the same thing, the God's plan. At the, at the end of the five days, she told us that the warts, you know, warts is something uh, um, growing in your skin that she, she'd been hiding for many years on her head, on her behind, behind her neck, her legs and back, all of a sudden came off. We didn't even know that she's suffering also with these things. We said, we will open the house for more people who is willing to come in. So 2016, Sunnyside Bungalow, our, our home, become a Sunnyside Sanitarium and was open. And we have so many testimonies and how the Lord works in a very simple way. Amen. Uh, Brother Winston and Sister Jackie was such an inspiration to us, mm -hmm. as we said yesterday. Um, because we met them at the camp meeting, I don't think we would have met them either way if the camp meeting wasn't there. So uh, this is really the foundation of how, how we began doing this work. We experienced it, we believe it, and we, be we truly believe that God's plan does work mm -hmm. and that he is willing, if we go out in faith, to, to not just heal physically, but mentally and spiritually. But it's interesting because it didn't take much faith because we saw, we experienced the true healing, healing ourselves. So we truly believed it. We didn't, we didn't say maybe or if. It's, it's just something that's a done deal. It's God's love in verity, his righteousness, overcoming the sin in our lives. This was up at the beginning up till now. So as we said, Matthew 18, 19, so if two of you shall agree about something and pray about it, the Lord will answer. And this is, he's never let us down with this. Mm -hmm. uh, we have let him down, but he has not let us down. So we agreed as a couple and prayed that we would do the medical missionary training. We would go to the camp meeting and we studied that this must be from the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so by the end of 2016, we wanted to go back to the Philippines now. Uh, because Beth had not seen her family for seven years mm -hmm. since coming to the UK. It wasn't her intention because she, she was only supposed to be here for two years and go home, but she met me. Uh, and uh, it's, it's just been different since then. So seven years, uh, she hadn't been back home. So she wanted to go home. But this time, we didn't think that we'll just visit uh, and tour around and enjoy ourselves and relax. It, it was no longer about us, but what can we do for the Lord in Philippines? Mm -hmm. So our prayer became, please provide us a plane ticket, an evangelism campaign, and God's work to do uh, for you, Lord, for six weeks in the Philippines. 
and provide us uh, for everything when we are there. So our, our prayer became big. We just said, Lord, you've given this to us here. We want to go back. And it's not about us. It's about you. We wanted to share the love of God that we had believed and had experienced ourselves. Mm -hmm. What do you think the Lord did in a space of two months? He heard, answered, and confirmed our prayers. All was done with no, uh, with no experience, no training to be speakers, talking to public, just our faith in God, guidance from the Holy Spirit and protection by the Lord's heavenly angels. So 2017, we went to our first family mission trip from late February to the first week of April, constantly praying together with the same mind, serving God by serving others. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we had a mindset to share and do the work. We planned for one mission, but the Lord had other plans for us. So we had one, we planned for one mission in the Philippines. We got in contact with the par local pastor uh, at near Beth's parents' place. And he said, yes, let's, let's do this. And a lot of people doubted at the time. He said, there's only two months. Uh, so we, we, we contacted him in December. We were planning to go out in February, late February. And people said, it's not enough time. You need at least a year to prepare for a campaign like that. But the Lord did it in two months. We traveled to the Philippines and uh, we ran a health and gospel seminar for a week with the local church. But also what came about uh, from this time we had over in Philippines was a very blessed prison ministry and literally doing health checks around the clock. So the place where we we're staying, um, a very humble place where Beth's parents live is literally in the jungle. People were queuing outside first thing in the morning after uh, from about seven o'clock just to have these health checks because it's so expensive in the Philippines, everything has to be paid for. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were doing that around the clock, literally to the time we had to leave Philippines, that the more we had to leave in the morning, about six o'clock in the morning, uh, the day we had to leave, but it was only till two o'clock in the morning when we got to finally go to bed because there was tr people traveling from different oh, yes. parts of the island to come and see us. Mm -hmm. And we said, we can't reject. And it got to a point where it, it turned about 11 o'clock and I was saying, this is just before we left. I said, it, it's too late now. We're going to, we're leaving early in the morning. And, um, but then we heard that they traveled so far mm -hmm. and we said, okay, Lord, this is your, it's your thing. And that's one thing, you know, when you, when you go on mission or when, you, when you're doing the Lord's work, he will provide that strength, especially when it's about him and about others. He will provide that strength because when we look back on uh, all our missions, we, we always wonder, where did the strength come from? And, you know, we didn't feel fatigued. We didn't feel anything. It was just the Lord really provided it. So what came about that first mission was the uh, prison ministry, the health evangelism doing check health checks around the clock and the practical evangelism like feeding the children mm. giving out tracks and it, we just felt the love of god flowing through to the harvest we set out to do one mission but the lord gave us three we were truly honored blessed amazed and thankful that the lord is the god he is because he has such a wonder he has such wonderful surprises waiting for all of us mm. we are we are nobody um, if you knew my beginnings, I, I was someone who shouldn't really be here. I should be in prison or I should, shouldn't be alive. But, but the Lord is truly wonderful. If we step forward in faith, uh, he is the author and finish of our faith and he will provide uh, what we are lacking. And because at the end of the day, it is him who gives us the gift, this gift of faith. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, we decided that uh, this, this mission wasn't going to be our last we planned for one and it became three major evangelism campaigns and we saw 68 precious souls baptized in 2017 so we returned to england and from amazing first mission where we saw 68 precious souls as errol said who gave their lives to christ we continued to pray what next lord what do you want us to do lord so we receive another confirmation to continue the home sanitarium and now receive health guests. 
So from, from the rest of 2017 to 2018, we started to receive health guests from, from all work of life, from young to old, from hormonal imbalance, women, um, melanoma, cancer, progressive multiple achorosis, overweight, uh, high blood pressure, diabetic, uh, heart problem, and so on. So what we saw was the Lord's miracle miracles happen. Through his method, we saw every one of, of our health guests experience healing and peace that surpassed understanding. It was not us that were, but it was the Lord we were just willing to be the vessels for him to use. Yes, and, and um, it, the, the key was, the key is we always emphasize is what you do after when you visit us. Uh, and, and it's the same with uh, uh, the medical missionary group, Sister Jackie was doing. It's really staying on that path and uh, being that support as they, they are and they were to us. So nearing the end of 2018, we heard the call to go back to the Philippines again. Uh, in 2019, it was almost identical to what, how we went back uh, in 2017. So in 2018, uh, we... We received emails and said, when are you going to come back? And so we said, okay, 2019 is the year. But this time we plan to do three missions like last time. Last time we planned one and he gave us three. So we thought, the Lord wants us to do three, so we'll do three. And we continued asking and praying in the same way as the first to provide uh, everything, to provide us everything. And do you think he answered? And we continued to pray and claim Matthew 18, 19. And uh, the Lord is such a, a, a wondrous God. Um, this is what it is to be submitted and to say, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. It's all him. It's all Jesus. So that none can boast. Because I'm sure if it was my way or my wife's way, we, we would choose to stay here. I would choose to stay here, work, save up money, buy all the things we want in this material world, then die. But what is life but vanity? So here we are again, 2019 comes. Uh, we have set the bar even higher this time. As Errol said, three mission, but this time the, uh, for 10 weeks. Preparation is always the key. You don't need to go to the war without preparation. We were challenged in many ways before we went on mission again because of the scale of this second mission. But the Lord did it again and provided it all. There were miracles that happened, which we don't have time to go through, but know that the Lord is still in the business of miracles. Mm -hmm. He provided the ticket, the, the accommodation, everything, as, as like last time, the Lord had other plans. We planned for three mission, but he gave us a number of tribes of Israel. He gave us 12 mission, 12 mission with a budget of three missions. What, what we <laughs> learn is that the Lord is constantly working and protecting and going before you when you go for him. Just a few highlights, highlights from the mission. The biggest evangelism campaign in Valinga Sagmisamis Oriental he healed the health, we healed the health expo, expecting about 500 people to come, but over 2,000 people came. From the second, we were there for witness baptism every week. For the next th uh, eight weeks, the prison ministry, the youth evangelism, one of the favorite mission um, took place in Kapatagan, the mountain region in a small village. Uh, General Santa City. Uh, we did a 10 days campaign. Uh, we made friends and that is about the, the family restoration program um, and the elders evangelism, also medical missionary training, uh, speaking the Hope Channel radio in, in Philippines, making a new friends um, to uh, different, different religions of the Philippines Bible study. Uh, with a born again community and, uh, and yeah the Lord's amazes us by the end of 10 weeks we witnessed over a thousand souls one to the Lord our fan was only for three mission that the Lord spread it 
and we even run out finance that the Lord provided the rest. God truly make up our deficiencies. Amen. Mm -hmm. And um, to be honest with you, we keep praising and thanking God, not just for these things, but both Beth and I, we, we have only been trained in medic medical missionary work. We haven't been trained how to speak, how to evangelize. We have no formal qualifications uh, to qualify us to do this kind of work. Uh, so there's many of you out there who are, we feel more qualified than us. But um, if you knew Beth and I, especially, uh, well, both of us really, we're very shy people. Um, before, you would never catch me speaking up in front of anywhere or anything. And same with Beth, both were very, were very reserved. And in some ways, we still have this. But when it comes to testify and work for the Lord, we know that he will do it for us. When we look at people in the church, we just think, how much more are you? How much more can God's people do this? If, we can, if he can take people like us, especially me, who was a complete loser. I can officially say that I was a complete loser. And turn us around and transform our lives and use us for his good. How much more? you how much more god's people uh in the church 2018 we are invited in rome italy for 2020 appointment by a lady who had trouble of her marriage and asked us to do a family restoration seminar in the in their church we said yes uh we did it in philippines so we can also bring it to italy so we were not expert we are still young uh, couple, but the Lord can use anyone. Mm. Uh, as we spoke before 2015 camp meeting, the team was nothing is impossible. We did the same thing in Italy, as this is really our theme in our family. The theme song, we use the theme song, nothing is impossible. This is the, the sermon from Tom and Pauline, the the, the skeleton of the closet we did it we give them to we give the message to them but we change in our own experience we also stood up together and speak like paul and caroline looking at each other <laughs> and deliver the message parenting marriage um uh if you remember in malfunction to miracle message i think that's with uh tom and I Paul, I think it's Tom and Elaine. and Elaine, and we just changed it into our own experience. It was inspired by by this group. The the setup you made here, uh, you also took it, and we also took it to Italy. The at the final day, uh, final Q and A, never experienced before such a powerful the Lord can do. It was a successful family restoration. Many mind was open. Uh, my, my heart was broken down and many, many family, many family was stored. Until, until now, they still contact us how the family restoration in Italy affects their family and their home. The Lord is good. This happened to us. It also happened to you when you need to say, if, if you say yes to the Lord's calling to you. Amen. So as a family. Amen. Amen. So I did just to. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Ah. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to add one more Bible verse. To, to encourage you, uh, this is one that uh, we've hold, held on to in 1 John chapter 2, uh, talking about who really leads us. Uh, but you have an, uh, verse 20, but you have an unction from the Holy One and know all things. In verse 27, but the anointing, so the unction really is an anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need not any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. This is our prayer. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bless you. Amen. Amen. Beth, may the Lord continue to bless you and your ministry and your family. It's clear that you have gone from strength to strength doing um, health expos and doing campaigns and people's lives have been transformed and touched is quite, quite apparent and quite clear. However, you must realize that maybe the ceiling has to come down from time to time for the Lord to prepare you for greater and more serious things. So as you continue your ministry, may the Lord continue to bless you Mm -hmm. and to keep you and to cause his face to shine upon you both and your little ones also. Thank you. Let us continue the program um, with Brother Trevor, who will share with us a presentation on how we can support the association. The SDA Home Education Association exists to support and enable Adventist families in the practice of true education in the home. Our vision is to restore God's original plan at creation for the education of our children. The association can provide support when dealing with public or educational authorities and keep you informed on home education developments. We provide opportunities for families to network share ideas and resources. We rely on our team of amazing volunteers and area coordinators, as well as our wonderful supporters and donors. Please consider giving a donation to support the work we do with homeschooling families. Your support will enable us to put on more events, run more seminars, hold more workshops and conferences, provide more materials and do more to support home school families. Any amount that you can give is greatly appreciated. Giving a regular monthly amount, however small, helps us plan ahead more effectively. But if you are unable to commit to a monthly amount, please consider a one-off donation to support our work. Why don't you head over to our website at www sdahomeeducation.org forge slash support dash us where you can find information on how to make your donation to us today that's www.sdahomeeducation.org forward slash support dash us and make your donation today thank you so much for your support may god bless you Amen and amen. We have come to the latter part of the program for this morning. And it will continue at 11.45. We have our speaker, um, Christian Badar, at 11.45. However, if you have questions that you would like to pose and to um, have answered, please email or put them in the chat so that we can corroborate them and um, put them in such a way where we can share those questions. And that will take place at 3.45. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Joseph and Katrina and Errol and Beth for their fantastic presentations on how the Lord has brought them a mighty way and how he's going to continue to lead them to the future. Let us bow our heads and this will give us a time where we can take a walk, drink some water, something that would stimulate us so that we can be refreshed, ready for 11.45 when we commence the program. Let us bow our heads. Great God of heaven, indeed you are God. We are so grateful for what we have heard this morning. It inspires us and touches us in such a way where we feel energized and motivated to do the same things. Lord, you know that our lives are hidden in the palm of your hand. And whether it be medical missionary work, 
whether it be preaching the gospel, whether it be testimonies or door knocking, anything that we can do for you, we know that you will multiply it and bless it. But we also recognize that everything won't be as we would have it. Problems will come, issues will arise, and trauma may even impact our bodies. But Lord, we thank you and we hear your words when you've told us that there isn't any disease or illness or sickness that you cannot heal. Hear our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> now, I can notice that there are about... Amen. <laughs> There are about 63 people here this morning. And if you choose to stay logged on, you're most welcome. Um, you could have conversations with each other. You could, if you choose to log out and then come back in, no problem whatsoever. But know this, you do not want to miss the rest of the program. Amen. <laughs>